Welcome to Interviews, the show about everyday people with extraordinary stories. I'm your host, Abigail Mankey. We are on the web at interviewslive.com and on Facebook at Interviews Live. My guest today is Crockett Graby. Crockett is a physicist with a PhD in applied physics from Caltech, BS and master's degrees in physics from the University of Texas, and he was a research scientist at the University of Iowa for 29 years. He has written or contributed to more than seven books and written over 100 papers and receive research grants from NASA and the National Science Foundation. He has more recently turned his attention to the collapse of the World Trade Center towers and written a book on the subject titled National Swindle on the World Trade Center. He contends that the official government report stating that the towers were brought down by fires caused by the plane crashes is both preposterous and impossible. In his professional view, the collapses could only have been caused by pre-planted explosives. He would not be the first one to suggest this, and there are entire websites that are devoted to alternative theories of the World Trade Center. Many would call him a conspiracy theorist and disregard his views outright. Interviews is not an investigative show, and I am not an investigative journalist. I am not bringing on anyone to counter or support Crockett's views, and I, not being a physicist, have not analyzed his calculations. That said, Crockett has been a physicist for over 30 years and brings professional knowledge to bear on the subject. Besides, this is Crockett's story, how he came to doubt the official reports, what evidence he found to support a different theory, and even his opinion as to what may have really happened. I welcome any feedback you as a listener may have on the subject. You can reach me on Facebook or interviewslive.com. Crockett, welcome to Interviews. Hello. Crockett, there's a lot to cover in 30 minutes. The official report on the World Trade Center was put out by the 9-11 Commission, it blames the collapses on fire. So what claims does it make about that? Well, it claims that uh, fires uh, caused the towers to collapse. And so all, all of the, the inter- gravitational energy of the towers went into the complete destruction of the towers. And I would claim that is uh, impossible, considering how high up the plane crashes were. But also uh, due to the fact that if you calculate the amount of energy expended to uh, crush the towers down, uh, from the observations, it was 10 to 100 times as much of the energy that would be available for fires to uh, cause the towers to collapse. Crockett, when did you first have doubts about the 9-11 Commission report and why? Well, I I had my own uh, 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 theories regarding this uh, sh- sh- shortly after the uh, the 911 report and I, I shortly after uh, the, two, the 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 911 after the incidents but then I know when the reports started coming out I didn't find agreement with the reports and I was thinking well I was going to publish something on them but I never got around to it so suddenly I got called on and was uh, to be interviewed on television and and I started going to the things. And so I've, in the last four years, I have uh, concentrated on this quite a bit. And I found that there's all sorts of things wrong with the, uh, with the, uh, the government reports. How fire behaves is critical to your arguments. How do you know how fire behaves? Well, I mean, the f- fire, for example, you can use, the, there have been skyscrapers caught on fire, you know the uh, the nature of the fire in the the skyscrapers. You know how it's inhomogeneous. You know how uh, the, how the, how it affects. What does the, that mean? Inhomogeneous. Inhomogeneous means it's uh, um, it uh, changes a lot with position. It's not like a uniform throughout the uh, the, uh, the 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 towers. And uh, for example, if you take say World Trade Center Seven. You remember that collapse in six and a half seconds, how smooth it was? Right. It was a uniform collapse, it was as if uni- it had been a planned demolition. That's correct. And yet, in 2008 report, NIST came to conclusions that fires brought it down. And I claim that is uh, virtually impossible. Because you're saying fire wouldn't behave that way. Fire just isn't, wouldn't bring it down all that's uniformly right. like that. That's right. And f- furthermore, uh, when it applied to the towers, that the towers collapse with fires, 
which no skyscraper ever has. None. No no skyscraper. None whatsoever, including the the world's worst skyscraper fire, that of the... The mo- win- world's... I'm sorry, say it again. The world's what? Worst skyscraper fire. Okay. That of the Windsor Building in Madrid, Spain in 2005. What happened there? Fire burned for 22 hours, and uh, yet the building did not collapse. And these are similar structures. Well, in fact, uh, the one in Madrid was uh, was a uh, was inferior to uh, the North Tower because it had been built. It not had not all been built with steel. It's a, a, both steel and concrete, and uh, but uh, you never had the building as a whole collapse. Crockett, I'm going to go ahead and lay down some of the facts about the tower collapses. So the North Tower was hit at 8.56 a.m., and it came down an hour and 42 minutes later. It took just 11 seconds to collapse. The South Tower was hit at 9.03 a.m. and came down 56 minutes later. It took nine seconds to collapse. Crockett, what to you is the single most compelling piece of evidence that the towers were not caused by fires but by explosives? Well, there are, there are actually several things that are that I wouldn't say there's one single most compelling thing, but particularly uh, for the the South Tower, uh, there were ver- was very little in the way of fires at the time it collapsed. In fact, uh, if you look, at meaning the, it was not raging. Not with not, fire. Only, yeah, not only was it not raging, but if you look at the collapse itself, the photographs of all the collapse, there is no place you see fire anywhere. It does not exist. Yet the whole building just came apart, and uh, it uh, came apart uh, in in, in stages. Temperature plays a big role in your arguments. You say that metal reached temperatures above 1,000 degrees Celsius with evidence of melted steel, but you say this could not have been caused by fire. Why not? Because fires cannot reach those temperatures yeah, uh, even uh, the 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 highest fires could possibly reach. You might have uh, something up to uh, uh, approaching 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is uh, one a uh, thousand degrees centigrade is almost 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, it's, uh, if you look at the, for example, I show one f- photo in the uh, the book of a uh, the pickup of of the crews covering uh, the waste of a pickup in the of a metal 11 days after 911 happened and that shows in fact uh, uh metal very hot metal coming out that is 1000 degrees centigrade that is 11 days afterwards it could not have been produced by fires so if this is the case why would other scientists and the 911 commission Say that it was. Why would they disagree about this? Well, I would, I would uh, have some agreement as to a disagreement as to whether other scientists would say this. That I know there there is one engineer that is in fact uh, behind uh, all of this. But it, if you look at the NIST commission, it was made up of several fire engineers. You did have one or two uh, other engineers, but you had nobody that was skilled in physics. And if you look at the reports they have, I claim that they're full of flaws in physics. Interesting. Okay. The two towers came down in 9 seconds and 11 seconds. And you say it's not possible that this could have happened by gravity, which if it was from fire, gravity is what would have brought the buildings down. Yes? That is correct. Okay. So how could this not be possible, 9 and 11 seconds by gravity? Well, the, uh, not only would the gravity take much longer to pull something down if it, was, uh, if it did pull it down, but if you look at the photographs of the collapse of the South Tower and North Tower, they do not correspond to uh, the collapse of a fire. They are clearly uh, do not agree with that. What would be an example? Well, for, for example, the... Uh, the uh, uh, NIST Commission put out there. Two Let th- me just say the NIST Commission is it's the same thing as the 9/11 Commission. Uh, well, right? it, it's, it the was, same, it's, a, it's, it's a, the same organization. Same organization, okay. right? Go ahead. It was a it was a government commission. Okay. That uh, but they put out their final report of the towers in 2005, and their final report did not uh, did not show any of those photographs of how the towers collapsed, and they did not even discuss them. 
they were, they, they were scientifically flawed because they reached conclusions of how they collapsed, but they did not compare it with the evidence of what was observed to, uh, uh, to, have the, uh, to collapse. And if you look at the observations for the collapse, they, uh, they show uh, uh, stuff going everywhere or stuff breaking apart. I mean, nothing that can be explained by fires. Is it possible that the fires could have caused, I don't know, this is like my stupid naive question, like caused things inside the buildings that would cause explosions that would then bring the buildings down faster or so on? Well, I would... um I don't know about fires causing explosions, but I mean there was clear evidence uh, uh, for explosions. Uh, the uh, the there was no fuel. Uh, I mean the fuel left over from the planes, for example, could not have, have explained this because you know there were there were several independent explosions, at least four in, in the south tower and at least four in the north tower, and uh, the, uh, the uh, and I would I would argue that. Uh, Fires do not cause these, although the fire could have been involved. There is evidence in the North Tower collapse that the, of uh, fire being involved. In fact, it, it goes uh, outside the tower uh, uh, quite a bit. And clearly it's uh, something that, uh, that is fueling that, and it's not the tower, because fire cannot go outside of a tower unless the, it has fuel with it. So the... Uh, the Neither the, the collapse of neither tower is consistent with fires having brought them down. Crockett, in your book, you reference two physics principles, conservation of energy and conservation of momentum, and you use these as important evidence that the pieces of debris, which are called squibs, shooting out of the buildings could not come from fires. So explain that. Well, that is correct. In fact, you have uh, uh, squibs coming out at several different uh, points, but in the uh, the shooting out of uh, of squibs of material from the uh, from, from the building. I mean, it's not produced by squ- by uh, by fires. But all of these squibs were in a, a narrow area. They came out in a narrow area and uh, uh, generally one side of the building. And uh, the, the wait, you're uh, saying they weren't? They came out not near the fire? You well, know, uh, there was there was no evidence of any fire there. In fact, they came out below were the descending uh, cloud of, uh, of uh, material from the collapse uh, was. So every time, that they, every time they occurred, they were below where the, uh, the, uh, the, the, this cloud of material coming down from the collapsing. So it was un- undeterred parts of the building that uh, had these uh, squibs coming out. So what is, what is the conservation of energy principle and conservation of momentum have to do with this? Well, certainly, uh, for example, the South Tower collapse started out with the, these horizontal ejections coming out on one slide. And uh, the horizontal ejections cannot come from fires because they, the, uh, the fires are the only energy, only force you have to force something is gravity, which forces it down. But they're horizontally, they're not coming down. They're coming out horizontally. And you just have no way that can be produced. You say, Crockett, that the World Trade Center was built to withstand unforeseen calamities, and you contend that the airplane damage was local. That's correct. Uh, The airplane damage was local, and it was high up. And even if you claim that the airplane damage could have caused the tops of the buildings to to fall off, for the buildings tops to come apart, there is no reason it could have caused the lower parts of the, the building to, to come apart. The, the thing that gets tricky, is, and maybe you actually kind of address it, that there are respected civil engineers, and I thought scientists from some reading that I had done, who agree that fires could have compromised the columns. And so what do you, what do you say to them? Well, I would just say look at the evidence, and I present the evidence in this uh, this book. Now, I don't. Uh, the thing is, that several engineers they do analyze uh, things. They do not analyze the physics. They they analyze uh, uh, buildings from the weakening structure because you know that's their profession to build buildings that uh, that stay up there. And so they've come into conclusions as to 
what might have caused them to collapse, but the conclusions do not agree with the evidence. So they're just not familiar with observations. Okay.